They're the most destructive invasive species in Florida by far. Burmese pythons wreak havoc on the Everglades, but the apex predators are about to become hunters' number one target. The airboat engines cut off and the swamp goes silent. On the deck, there are three massive totaling 40 feet of raw muscle. This is the result of the Florida Python Challenge, a desperate attempt to take back the glades. Hunters are hauling in record numbers of snakes. An invasive species in the Florida Everglades is threatening the area's sprawling ecosystem. Burmese pythons are, are pre apex predators at the top of the food chain. South Florida has hired 25 top hunters to capture and kill the snakes. But once the adrenaline fades and the weighing scales are put away, the real horror begins. The state is now sitting on mountains of dead reptiles that they cannot get rid of. And the data coming from these bodies tells a terrifying story. The snakes are not just surviving our attacks, they are evolving to beat us. The mountain of rotting reptiles. You might think you know what a swamp sounds like. You imagine crickets, frogs, birds calling out, and maybe the splash of an alligator. But if you walk into certain parts of the Florida Everglades today, you will notice something terrifying. It is quiet. It is dead quiet. That is because something has eaten almost everything. We are talking about the Burmese python. This is not just a snake problem. This is an invasion. These creatures are native to Southeast Asia, but they have made themselves right at home in the Florida heat. Scientists are learning invasive pythons in South Florida can eat bigger prey than they realize, and that includes an adult deer. They have no natural predators here. Nothing can stop them. They grow massive, sometimes reaching lengths of over 18 feet, and they are hungry. The numbers are honestly hard to wrap your head around. Since the year 2000, the state has removed more than 18,000 pythons, and that is just the ones they found. Experts think there could be tens of thousands more hiding in the sawgrass, invisible to the naked eye. So how did this happen? Well, it is not that simple. Some people say a hurricane destroyed a breeding facility back in the 90s, releasing babies into the wild. Others say it was pet owners who realized their cute little snake grew into a 10-foot giant that could crush a human, so they let them go in the woods. However it started, the result is a disaster. But here is the catch. These snakes are not just scary, they are destroying the balance of nature. Raccoon populations drop by 99% in some areas. Marsh rabbits and bobcats are disappearing. The pythons are eating the Everglades from the bottom up. When the hunters bring these snakes in, it is a spectacle. Crowds gather to see the massive bodies stretched out on tables. They measure them, weigh them, and take photos. It feels like a victory. Huge pythons are taking over part of the state, slithering right into people's backyards, and now Florida is declaring open season on the predators. Everyone cheers because that is one less predator eating the native wildlife. But after the photos are taken and the prizes are handed out, the crowd goes home. The lights turn off and the officials are left with a massive pile of dead snakes. We are talking about tons of biomass. You cannot just leave it there to rot. It poses a health risk. So the big question keeps coming up. What do you actually do with thousands of dead pythons? You might think the answer is easy. Just feed them to animals or eat them, right? Well, hold on a second. It turns out these snakes are hiding a toxic secret that makes them dangerous even after they are gone. The disposal method they chose was not what anyone expected. From swamp to handbag. So here is the deal. When you see a massive animal that is made of pure muscle, your first instinct is to think about food. People eat alligator tail in Florida all the time. It is a delicacy. So naturally, when the python problem exploded, everyone thought they had solved world hunger. Why not just barbecue the snakes? It sounds like a perfect plan. You remove the pest and you get a free meal. Hunters were excited. Chefs were ready to try out new recipes. Python curry, python jerky, python steaks. It could have created a whole new industry, but science stepped in and said absolutely not. The crazy part is that these snakes are loaded with mercury, and we are not talking about a safe amount. We are talking about dangerous levels that could mess you up. Here is how it works. Mercury is a heavy metal. It is in the environment, usually from pollution or natural sources. It settles in the water and gets absorbed by the tiny plants and bugs at the bottom of the food chain. Then small fish eat those bugs. Then bigger fish eat the small fish. 
Every time a bigger animal eats a smaller one, it absorbs all the mercury that was inside its prey. This is called bioaccumulation. Now think about the python. It is an apex predator. It eats the big fish, the raccoons, the possums, and even the alligators. By the time you get to a full-grown python, it has absorbed the mercury from thousands of other animals. It is basically a swimming toxic waste dump. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, or the FWC, did some tests. The Florida Department of Health and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission have teamed up to determine if the mercury levels found in python meat is safe for humans to eat. They found that the mercury levels in python meat were sky high. If you ate it regularly, you could suffer from nerve damage, kidney issues, and a whole list of other nasty health problems. So the idea of selling python meat in supermarkets was thrown out the window immediately. They had to issue strict warnings. Do not eat the snakes. Do not feed the snakes to your pets. Do not even leave the carcasses out for other animals to eat because then you are just poisoning the scavengers too. This creates a huge logistical headache. Imagine you have 5,000 pounds of meat that looks good, but is actually poison. You have to treat it like hazardous waste. You cannot just dig a hole and bury it everywhere or you might contaminate the groundwater. Most of the time, the hunters who participate in these challenges do not want the whole snake. They want the skin or maybe the skull as a trophy. But the meat, it is useless. It is heavy. It smells and it takes up space. So the state has to step in. They have designated drop-off points. Hunters bring the snakes in, they get measured, and then the bodies are taken away to be incinerated or disposed of in special landfills. It is a grim end for such a powerful creature. But people are creative, and even if you cannot eat the meat, there is still something very valuable on a python. The skin. The pattern on a Burmese python is beautiful. It is intricate and unique, and in the world of high fashion, that kind of beauty is worth a lot of money. So, while the meat was getting tossed, a new industry started to rise from the ashes. Basically, everyone loves a good pair of snakeskin boots. It is a classic look. For years, the fashion industry imported python skins from Southeast Asia to make luxury bags, belts, and shoes. We are talking about items that sell for thousands of dollars. So when Florida realized they had thousands of these snakes right in their backyard, a light bulb went off. Why import skins when you can harvest them right here? Then there is the size. The snakes in Florida are wild. A new study finds invasive Burmese pythons in South Florida, which can grow to 18 feet long, are able to open their jaws wider than previously thought, making them capable of swallowing native deer and alligators whole. They have been fighting alligators, scraping against sawgrass, and getting bit by parasites. Their skins are often scarred or damaged. High-end fashion brands usually want pristine farm-raised skins that are perfect. A wild Florida python looks tough and rugged, which is cool for some things, but maybe not for a $5,000 handbag. Despite this, a local industry has sprung up. There are craftsmen in Florida who specialize in tanning python hides. They turn these invasive pests into wallets, phone cases, and even pants. It is becoming a badge of honor to wear something made from a Florida python. It says, you are helping the environment. The state encourages this. They want the snakes to have value because if they have value, more people will hunt them. If a hunter knows he can get a bounty from the state and then sell the skin for a few hundred bucks, he is going to spend more time in the swamp. Some researchers are even looking into ways to make the tanning process easier and cheaper so that more people can do it. They want to turn the invasive python into a purely economic resource. But there is a darker side to this too. If you create a massive market for python skins, do you accidentally encourage people to keep them around? It is a concept called the cobra effect. If you pay people for snakes, some people might start breeding them just to sell them. Florida has to be very careful to make sure they are eliminating the population, not farming it. But the skin is just the wrapper. What they found deep inside the body tells a much scarier story. Digging for the truth. The crazy part is what happens in the lab. After the pythons are weighed and measured, many of them end up on a stainless steel table in a research facility. This is where the real work begins. Scientists perform necropsies. That is basically an autopsy for an animal. They cut the snakes open to see exactly what is going on inside. And the most important thing they look for is the gut content. 
They want to know what the snake ate for its last meal. This research has been shocking. They have found entire deer inside pythons. They have found alligators. They have found the remains of rare birds that are on the endangered species list. In one case, they found three deer inside a single snake. It proves just how voracious these predators are. This data is crucial. It helps the state understand the impact on the ecosystem. It proves that the pythons are not just a nuisance, they are an ecological wrecking ball. They also check the reproductive organs to see how fast they are breeding. They found that female pythons can lay up to 100 eggs at a time and they guard those eggs. This explains why their numbers exploded so fast. Knowing this helps the hunters target the females during breeding season to have the biggest impact. So in a way, the dead snakes are being used as a weapon against the living ones. But here is where it gets weird. We know the state has removed over 18,000 pythons since the year 2000. That sounds like a big number. It sounds like a victory. But some researchers look at that number and they do not celebrate. They get worried because the math does not add up. One study finding populations of raccoons and opossums dropped 99% over a 15-year period. Bobcats dropping 87%. Other mammals have effectively disappeared. Based on how much food is disappearing in the Everglades, all those missing raccoons, rabbits, and possums, there should be way more snakes than we are finding. The ground is full of holes, cracks, pockets, and underwater tunnels. Scientists call this karst topography, but you can just call it a honeycomb of hiding spots. For millions of years, water has dissolved the rock, creating a massive labyrinth of caves and tunnels right under the surface. We call this the aquifer system. It is where Florida gets its drinking water. But now people think the pythons are using it as a super highway. Think about the tactical advantage this gives the enemy. On the surface, life is hard for a snake. It is hot. There are alligators. There are humans with trucks and thermal cameras. There are drones flying overhead. But 10 feet underground, it is a different story. Down in the limestone tunnels, the temperature stays cool and constant all year round. It is pitch black, which is fine because snakes smell their way around. And most importantly, it is safe. No hunter can reach them there. If this theory is true, it means the pythons can travel for miles without ever seeing the sun. They could be moving from one swamp to another completely undetected. You could have a team of hunters clear out an entire section of the forest, declaring it snake free. But the whole time, the snakes are just 20 feet below them, slithering through a flooded tunnel to the next safe zone. This changes everything we know about containment. How do you build a fence to stop a creature that travels underground? You can't. And it gets creepier because these tunnels are not just out in the wild. The aquifer connects to everything. It runs under the highways. It runs under the farms. It runs right under the suburbs of Miami and Fort Lauderdale. There have been reports that sound like urban legends, but they happen often enough to make you wonder. People claiming they hear movement in the pipes, snakes popping up in storm drains miles away from the Everglades. The idea is that there is an entire shadow population living beneath civilization. While people are sleeping in their beds thinking they are safe in the city, there could be massive reptiles navigating the wet, dark tunnels right under their floorboards. It turns the ground you walk on into a horror movie. You might be standing on a dry hiking trail looking at the beautiful scenery, but if you put your ear to the ground, you might be standing right on top of a nest. Now, I want to ask you a serious question. Do you think we can actually stop them before they reach the next state line, or is it already too late? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more mysteries from the wild.